We're about to watch Our Little Family, which follows the everyday lives of the Hamill family who happen to be little people. And I'm joined today by the lovely Pamela Ray Schuler. I'm a comedian, keynote speaker, and disability advocate. Let's get started. Be whoop. We are a family of five, but what makes us so special is that we are all small. <laughs> We're raising our kids to know life can be just as good small as it is tall. I remember the last time I lost my tooth, do you? No. I put it under the, the pillow. Or the tooth fairy. And then my dad's like, I'm not giving you any money. <laughs> and I said, what about the tooth fairy, though? He said, We're Russian immigrants with no money. <laughs> We're the Hamels! What up, Hamels? Have awesome. you seen the show? No. Me either. I'm in it. I'm into it, not in it. Oh, I was gonna say, you're in it. <laughs> we have twin daughters and they are about to turn three. Their names are Cece and Kate and they are the complete opposite of Jack. They are very high maintenance. Yes. That's like you. I agree fully, which is why the twins are my favorite people already. <laughs> What's unique about our family is that we are all small and that we all have the most common form of dwarfism, which is achondroplasia. Achondroplasia, you heard of it? Yes. Achondroplasia is when you have a defect in changing cartilage into bone. Because when we're born, we actually have a lot of cartilage that needs to ossify, AKA turn into bone. Those who have achondroplasia have normal sized torsos, usually, and then have shorter than normal limbs, upper and lower. That makes sense. So I'm four foot six and a half. So I'm of short stature, but I don't have a specific diagnosis like achondroplasia. I really just think I life. just forgot to grow. Okay, well that happens. I'm little, my kids are little. I'm very proud to be a little person. We're all little together. I think there's like a lot of these views that people with disabilities and differences are like sitting home sad mm -hmm. and wishing our differences away. In addition to being four foot six and a half, I have Tourette syndrome. And I think for a lot of us, we've embraced the heck out of what makes us us. And personally, I don't wish to not be different, but I do sometimes wish that the world was created a little bit more with disabilities and differences in mind. Jack just started kindergarten and he's riding the bus with all the other kids because we don't want him to feel any different. Is there any dangers? That I don't see any dangers. No. You know, I will say though, the development of children who are born with achondroplasia, there's an issue with where the brain stem turns into the spinal cord. Oh. It's called the cervical medullary junction. It can sometimes be more narrow. So when you pick up a child that has achondroplasia diagnosis, you need to be careful and really support the back of their head oh. so that it doesn't go back because they can have injury. No one should let me hold kids without, like, just at all? When two little people have kids, they have a 50% chance that the baby will be little. Then we have a 25% chance that the baby will be average size. Then we have a 25% chance that the baby will inherit the dwarfism gene from both of us. And if the baby inherits that gene from both of us, they call it a double dominant baby. And after it's born, it doesn't live very long. In medical textbooks, it usually says someone who is homozygous for this condition is incompatible with life. Um, I would say there's a possibility that they can be born and sustain life early on, but then they usually end up passing. Same day that I found out that I was pregnant with twins, I also found out that I had a medical complication, that there was a blood clot in the middle of the two babies. Blood clot in the middle of the two babies. I'm guessing in the umbilical vein, that's really rare. They had told me that if that blood clot were to break within my first trimester, I could lose either one or both of those babies. In general, pregnancy creates a higher risk for having blood clots. That's a known risk. Okay. Um, but having twins elevates that risk even more. Uh, specifically later in the pregnancy. Luckily, we were blessed that the babies got bigger and the blood clot got smaller. Oh, yeah. But then we had to test to see if they had the double dominant gene. First, we found out that Cece was going to be little. And a girl. Just, just wait. <laughs> that we, that's the most important. And then we knew that she was healthy and it was going to be a girl. Do you <clears throat> think about or care about if you have a child what their height is gonna be? No, I'd be more afraid that they'd be athletic. Like I can raise, I can raise a kid of any height. I can raise a kid with Tourette's, but like, what am I gonna go to a basketball game? Well, you can watch. It's really common for little people to have a fear of dogs. I don't like that dog. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they'd feel about Bear. Bear. We're Bear. best friends. Hi, high five. Oh, he has to get oh, the whole body oh, up. Oh, he has to do, oh. You can I get one too, bud? Oh, thank you. Can I get one? Thank you, buddy. Can I get one? One more, high five. He's like, Dad, I Please? can do 10 Just already. one more, high five. My turn. Oh, oh you love him more. <laughs> You're a boy. traitor. You're my best boy. You're a traitor. Average size people really don't think about it, but imagine if dogs were the size of bears and they were coming up to you. Did she say size of bears? He carry a stool. 
Because you used to have a stool from first grade through, yeah. I mean, well, eighth grade. Yeah. I live in a studio apartment in New York City and uh, I have six stools in one apartment. Really? I can't reach my microwave because in New York, they put them above your oven stove, whatever that thing is. In my closet, I can't reach 80% of it. I have a stool there. I have one in my bathroom because most of the storage is above the sink. In my living room, I've got one because my bed is a normal size bed and I have to run and jump into it. And sometimes you don't want to be an acrobat. Today we are meeting Jack's teacher. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what she's going to say. Does he ever like sit there and go, so oh, Mrs. Claiborne, I can't see? He told the boys and girls, you guys need to move over because I cannot even do the rectangle rumba. So he moved himself to the front and stood right okay, in front good. of the... Oh, is it self-advocacy? Yeah, I love that. I think that's something we should be working with all kids, not just kids with disabilities and differences. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how do you speak up if you're not getting what you need to be successful? I talk a lot about disability inclusion, but in reality, we all need different things at different times to be successful. You have to be this high? So you can go to the left, Jack, I think. And then I think the girls need to go to the right. It's the same thing. It goes to the same place. At the bouncy pillow, we had to make a decision. Do we send Jack with people his own age, or do we send him with the people his own size? It's saying by height. Yes. So why are we trying to create a new interpretation? Because I also, he might want to play with his friends. Fair. The reason I worry about this, and the reason I'm being strict about it, is because if you're like in an amusement park, and there's these signs about height, yeah. it's because of safety and security right. of the seat belts and locking mechanisms. I get it. I can't ride so half I those worry. rides. Really? I'm too short to ride half I the rides. I can't either because of my fear. Why are you laughing at me? Sorry. That's not fair. you made it sound like you can't for like an accessible reason. That is an accessible reason. No, it's a mental health reason. That's accessible. Okay, fine. Can we have some cookies? Thank you so much. I'm living in an average size world. It's not gonna adapt to me. I have to figure out how to adapt to the world. How about these, look. Come here. Why don't we do these? My grocery store in New York City refers to me as the climber. At one point they were like, you have to stop climbing. And I was like, okay, then you either need to have step stools that are available to me or have someone who is available to reach the things down. Because in New York we build up. Yeah. And so I can't reach 70% of the things I need hmm. at a grocery store. So what did they say to you? They told me they would have someone help me and I still climb. Oh. Because I was just born small. Why are you two just the same size? Because we were both born small. I love that about children, that they're not afraid. They're just being genuine. Yes. I think that's the most authentic and genuine way to go about it. I agree. Kids have questions because they're learning about the world. And if we shush a kid when they have questions, we're teaching them to feel shame in the presence mm -hmm. of disability. Mm -hmm. So while not everyone is comfortable explaining to a kid maybe why they're little or why they twitch or why they use a wheelchair, mm -hmm. um, for people who are, it's great because we're giving kids' information, and kids, I think, are inclusive when they yeah. get it. Whenever I'm more honest about what I don't know mm -hmm. and what I can learn, the more engagement I get. God, I wish more doctors did that. Mm -hmm. I wish more well, doctors would be like, I don't actually know a lot about Tourette's, can you tell me, Bam? Yeah. If you put me in a room with 10,000 people who are four foot six and a half and have a whole lot of Tourette's syndrome, every single one of us would have a totally different story. It'd be cool to build one sometime in our yard or something that would be. A place set? On totally equal grounds. Like, this design is so he doesn't know it's any different, but he could climb up as fast as the other kids or whatever, you know what I mean? You mean for you to build it? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Disrespectful laugh. I love that, like, yeah, this show's about a family of little people, but it's also just about, like, a family. Yeah, exactly. And they are... They talk smack That was like show. a sick burn. The challenge of building this place set is I have to make things spaced a little bit closer together for Jack. But I also want to space it in a way that every other kid in the world can use it too. And it's not exclusively for him. Great example of universal design. Universal design is this idea that as we create anything, a building, a community, a structure, a phone, a, a tool, we create it with the goal of as many people as possible being able to use it as the at the fullest extent possible. Oh, okay. So Give really, me an example of that besides this. When you go to open a door and there's a button and the door opens automatically, mm -hmm. that was initially designed for people who use wheelchairs. But think about someone carrying groceries. Think about someone carrying kids. Think about someone who maybe doesn't have use of their hands or arms. You do something for one or two and it's often beneficial for mm. so many more. I was born and raised in Annapolis. I have never really left. I stay here because no one sees me as a little person anymore. Michelle. Describe the hmm I just heard. That's, it's just an interesting way to, I think, I'm trying to figure out like the best way to say this. 
I think it's okay to see disability. She is of short stature. She's mm-hmm. a little person. I think what she probably means, or I'm never going to put People words in her mouth. Don't judge her. For don't her. treat her differently. Yeah. That's what I think. Probably. Like I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Of wanna, course, I think. I actually don't love it when someone is like, when I'm with you, Pam, I don't see Tourette's anymore. Mm. I bark. <laughs> like, yes, you I do. I take advantage of that when I'm with you. <laughs> Some average size people think that little people can't work out and that's a total myth. Dude, you work out harder than me, except when I'm boxing training for a professional fight, I'm doing a lot more. But otherwise, your baseline of working out is insane. Thank you, I love working out. And the gym is made for men of average height. The elliptical, I was told I'm too short to use, I'm too short to use any of the bikes. The things that you pull down, I can't even reach it. As a little person, I'm really lucky that I don't have any physical complications that cause me not to be able to do what I physically like want to do. Those with achondroplasia have higher rates of osteoarthritis, so they Hmm. can have a lot of joint pain and it could be very painful. Also, those with achondroplasia, especially kids, have higher rates of um, frequent uh, middle ear infections. Uh, early development of sleep apnea. Huh. There's, so the, there's things you have to, what we call in medicine is give anticipatory guidance. That's interesting. I've had a ton of ear infections and no one ever told me it could be connected to something else. Mm-hmm. See if I was your doctor and you were my patient. <laughs> okay. I'll just cut yours, okay? No, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, I love him. He's going for he the eats cheese, how I eat the a cheese. man of my heart. We're gonna start eating healthier. Maybe tomorrow, <laughs> since we're eating pizza tonight. The story of my life, maybe tomorrow. I really want the kids to have better eating habits because as little people, if you're overweight, it's more pressure on your knees, your joints, and your back. You know what point we never made clear medically about this? If you're born with achondroplasia, there's no other medical conditions that you're diagnosed with. You still have a normal life expectancy. Oh, that's good to know. Michelle's taking a cooking class. The girls are taking dance. Made me kind of realize that there's something I've wanted to do for a long time. What do you guess that he's gonna do? What I hope it is, is like a magic class. I was looking up skydiving. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, I kind of signed myself up. <laughs> You're gonna go skydiving? There we go, oh, oh. Right there, see, look, his parachute opened. I'm so relieved Dan's parachute opened. That was my biggest. I guess that is the thing that you want to do. Uh-huh. There's your little boy, Zia. Uh, hey, Jack. My dad could do anything. Yeah. Do you know that Pam roasts me literally all the time? She actually roasted my entire Instagram picture catalog. Click here to check that out. As always, stay happy and healthy and fabulous. You said nuggety last time. I know, I switch it up. Okay. <laughs>